In Czech, we have several categories of pronouns. They are personal, possessive, indicative, interrogative, relative, indeterminate or negative. Ahoj, krásné studentky a krásní studenti. I would like to talk about pronouns in Czech. But uh, before we start, uh, let's take advantage of your virgin mind. It won't be some extraordinary news to you if I tell you that uh, languages are evolving and adapting to different situations and in the recent years only in the recent years uh, there have been some uh, changes uh, regarding to personal pronouns in many languages to mirror um, the situation of some people who uh, do not feel comfortable or just do not feel possible to um, be put uh, into a gender, a specific uh, unchanging gender. So the world where people were all uh, female or male is over and we need to take into consideration the new situation and fortunately even if very belatedly Czech follows um, the example of English or German and other languages I do not know about and starts to kind of incorporate very slowly and with much difficulties um, these new pronouns and since I presume that you don't know much yet about Czech pronouns otherwise why would you be listening to this lesson uh, it would be perhaps um, useful if we just uh, started or if we examined uh, first these neo pronouns these new pronouns uh, in Czech as I look at them with my old uh, mind rigid not virgin uh, of the knowledge of the pronouns I have been taught it's very difficult for me to adjust and to easily uh, express myself with these new uh, personal pronouns without even mentioning for example the game uh, sims which now in czech can also be customized the personal pronouns which is a great 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 wow progress in czech if the game sims has uh, these uh, pronouns uh, we cannot just skip this, we need to address this question, okay? And this is really not about whether is it right or wrong or a nonsense or something very good. We are not talking about this at all. We are just talking about kind of the grammar uh, and the vocabulary which are uh, adapting and adjusting. And I believe sincerely that not to talk about um, this evolution uh, wouldn't be a very wise uh, step um, if we are uh, to learn a pronouns we should also include the new pronouns and this is why i would like to start with them so as you know probably we have three um, ways to address someone usually we talk about two but we need to talk about three ways first is the formal way where you are addressing another person in plural it's the vi 
vikani or in French vouvoiement. So you say V in plural even though uh, we are talking only to one person. The second way is when we address uh, another person as ty. So this is in singular and in French we would say tu toi mon, tu, te. The third way is onikani and it's a situation when we address one person as they, oni, jich, jim. And this is an old way uh, of, I believe, taking distance from someone. So I have heard this only in old films, oni. And this is why it is called Onikan. I believe I will move because I have the sun right in my eyes. Why I'm talking about this, it's because precisely Onikani, this specific form, which exists, by the way, in German as well, is one of the ways to address non-binary uh, persons and also a way by them to talk about themselves. But unfortunately this form isn't a perfect one because it also um, expresses uh, the binary uh, female and male uh, gender uh, because you have oni and you have oni. So no good this one. This is why another way of addressing um, non-binary or um, gender fluid people would be the personal pronoun one which is really very specific and this could be also a way of incorporating it into the past tense of verbs so instead of saying on psal dopis male or ona psala dopis female it would be one psale Dopis. For me it's a revolutionary situation and for the first time with me you are kind of stepping into something which is just in the process of becoming. When I teach you or talk to you about Czech it's always these old rigid forms of pre-existing uh, grammar, pre-existing language and for the first time it's something which is right now being kind of forged so it's really a wonderful situation for both you and me on Epsaledopis <laughs> I believe if I said this to an average Czech on Epsaledopis, he would think that I was kind of mentally disabled because I have never heard it, which doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but it's not used very much, okay. But we must admit it's new and Revolutionary. Some of you could ask, but wait a minute, you have masculine, you have feminine, but you have also neuter. Why don't you use neuter for these situations? Well, uh, we could, but let's say it's slightly disrespectful. Bylo tak hodné a podalo mi pero. It doesn't feel right. Bylo tak hodné. A podale mi pero. It's very difficult to say this. Another way would be to oscillate between masculine and feminine. For example, naučil se být v pohodě, když ji oslovují špatně. Naučil masculine se být v pohodě, 
když ji oslovují špatně, ji feminine. So this is another way of coping with this in Czech. But anyway, this was just an introduction for your virgin mind. And now I will uh, say something about the old uh, used pronouns. In Czech we have several categories of pronouns. They are personal, possessive, indicative, interrogative, relative, indeterminate or negative. Personal. Ja, ty, on, ona, ono, my, vy, oni, oni, ona. And now if I put the correction of what we said uh, previously. Ja, ty, on, ona, ono, one, my, vy, oni, oni, ona, and one again. I don't know even what the plural of the neo pronoun would be. So, and the reflexive se, possessive pronouns. Můj, tvůj, její, jeho, jeho. The new pronoun, I don't know. Plural, náš, váš, jejich. And the reflexive, svůj. Indicative, ten, tenhle, Tamten, onen, tamta, takový, týž, etc. This is just an introduction. We don't learn them all today. It would be a big piece. Interrogative, kdo, co, jaký, který, jaká, která. Relative, again, kdo, co. Jaký, který, čí, jenč. I don't know exactly what is the difference. They sound the same to me. But we will see later. Indeterminate. Někdo, něco, některá, nějaký, nějaké. And here we could, for the new pronouns, we could say některý, star, a. Některý, některá jsou both. Leda, kdo. Kdokoli. And also každý, všechen, každá, všechny. And negative. Nikdo, nic, ničí, žádný, žádná, žádné. And there is a strange sentence. I must read it because, frankly, I am unable to memorize something like this. In most subject predicative clauses, personal pronouns are mute, as the subject's person is expressed by the verb affix. So, example. Chodím. Piješ. Učí se. Vstávají. Usmívá se. And I didn't mention object pronouns. They replace the direct or the indirect object in a sentence. There are two types of object pronouns per person, depending on the case, because yes, personal and other pronouns are the kind, usually. All the time. And they are mi, mě, for the first person, tě, tebe, tobě, ho, mu, ji, jí, je, mu, nás, nám, vás, vám, je, jim. For example, dej mi to pero, but you can also say dej mě to pero, or miluji Tě miluji tebe. 
but more about this later. So this is Krasne Strunky a Krasne Strunky what you can expect from um, the Czech pronouns with the little thought for um, the neo pronouns and I will come back soon to you with uh, this put into uh, more digest uh, lessons. Brzy nas As for my part, in my constant need of adventure, I traveled across Switzerland to Italy on a survival photography journey. When I was done with my shots, I went further to discover my surroundings. I was even pursued by dangerous beasts. Afterwards, I indulged myself in a luxurious dwelling, breathtaking views. Many Michelin stars rated food. And panoramic cinemas. Last but not least, some ideas of new Czech lessons for you coming soon.